This video is brought to you by T Blocks. Enjoy the content now, but stay for the shilling later. Welcome to Lobster Magnet and Friends. I'm here with just by myself to follow through on my promise to for My Hero Academia Month. So I just finished my first video. I'll be posting it um, this next Friday, uh, just before the first episode of Season 3 hits. And here we are to talk about the latest chapter, 177, because I promise throughout this entire month, I'm going to be doing chapter reviews of the manga, uh, you know, to go along with the uh, My Hero Academia Synergy Month that I'm doing uh, for a all of April. So this was like a continuation of uh, Midora's fight against uh, Gentile. There's not a huge amount discuss because basically it's like a sort of very low level hero stuff where um you know basically Medora uh, chases Gen Gentil the gentle criminal into a construction site very classic superhero fight location and we get to see a little bit more of Gentil's powers as he lacks sticks around and we also learn about that his quirk um, the way it works is that, like, you know, he can turn things to elastic and give them elastic properties, uh, like he does with the steel pillar beams, uh, but as, you know, it wears off, they return to normal, and that can cause damage, and good old Deku gets his first civilian saving part, where, like, you know, the steel beam comes down, and he has to deal with, um, keeping it up while protecting some poor innocent bystander, and, you know, this is a really interesting, refreshing arc, I, I like it how it the stakes feel incredibly personal and big, even though the actual fight isn't, you know, Gentile is like definitely kind of like a shitty villain, but he's a shitty villain by design. He's like not very good at his job. He wants to appeal very cool, but, um, and he wants to get attention. He only has this like little midget girl who's like his fangirl and that's it. Gentle, the gentle criminal uh, just basically does minor dumb shit, but you know, he actually does have a versatile quirk enough to be, you know, an interesting threat. You know, uh, some people I've seen comments saying like, oh, this is what Luffy would do if he awakened his devil fruit. And you know what? I can't argue with that. This does kind of feel like an extension, given the fact that he can make elastic walls out of nothing and turn other things to elastic. But, you know, it's definitely a fun little sub-villain, and I do love how this is like a great power-up arc. And I also love the implication that, like, you know, somehow Midora's new gloves are going to combine with his iron soles to, like, create a new fighting style, and that he has been learning breakdancing skills from, um... Pinky Girl, Ashito, I forget her name, I can't pronounce it properly. Uh, that, uh, plus his uh, other training, is like him on his quest to not so much surpass All Might, because now that we've learned, you know, the overall direction of his herodom is that, you know, he can't surpass All Might. If he tries to do what All Might can do, he'll just destroy his body. So now he has to become a better su superhero, a, a smarter superhero, a superhero who can work around his limitations. And, and little by little, it's interesting that we're, like, seeing, like, little mini arcs for, like, each component of his uh, hero gear, you know. In the transitional arc after the big raid arc, um, he has a little bit where he, like, you know, develops the shoot style. Um, then with the most recent big arc, um, you know, the uh, Chikaski uh, Yakuza raid arc, um, you know, he learns the limitations of his shoot style. Uh, and because of his deus ex machina with uh, Ari, he was able to, you know, save the day. But he, he sort of sees that as an overall weakness because he's not going to have a deus ex machina to rely upon. So that leads to the evolution of his next piece of hero gear, which is this uh, these gloves, which allow him to, like, you know, shoot off his fingers without breaking them. Uh, which begs the question, like, you know, um, are, are we going to, like, follow this trend throughout the series where, like, you know, there's another big super arc with, like, that giant guy that we learned about between chapters. And then... You know, um, Midora uses this evolution to take him down, but then he realizes he needs a third piece of equipment to complete his set. But but I do like the idea that, like, little by little, we're, like, building up a worthy hero costume for him. Uh, we're not getting, like, the full thing. Just as he's, like, sort of evolving to get 100% of uh, all, all for one, one for all's power, uh, he's also evolving a costume to support himself. I still feel like eventually the ultimate power up for him is going to be like, um, you know, he, he gets a muscle form. He's just like, oh, this is 100% of uh, one for all's power. And then he just like transforms into a super muscle form, just like uh, All Might. And that'll be his, you know, kind of ultimate gimmick um, that he'll work his way up to. But the interesting thing is that we, you know, always kind of see that like All Might's uh, superhero developments were not something that he, like, particularly planned. He's just like, I wanted to become the symbol of peace, so I did it. I wanted a muscle form, so I did it. I don't know how I did it, I just did it, and I worked really hard, and I got it. 
So in a way, he's almost kind of like an idiot savant in that respect. But, uh, you know, it was a fun little chapter, and also the fun little teaser where La Brava says, um, you know, oh, I'm going to have to use my quirk. Uh, so, you know, I was wondering if she was quirkless, but now I guess we'll see uh, next chapter. And, and I like this sort of, like, combination of, um, you know, progression slash low stakes, low hero stakes, and the fact that, like, uh, you know, Deku is fighting to keep his uh, fil- his festival alive, while, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, Gentile is like, just, like, fighting for legitimacy, and he's like, I'm not gonna give up my dream of being, like, a gentle criminal, and, you know, the more he tells him, the more uh, Deku is like, no, I can't let you in, even if they, you know, you do turn down the senators, that doesn't make it, it good, this festival could still get cancelled. I almost kind of wonder if, like, this will end where... This would be interesting. This would be an interesting ending because Gentle is not a really malicious guy. He's he's the gentle criminal that like somehow you know after their fight like Midora becomes friends with Gentle and he like gets him like a pass to come into UA because he realizes he's not with the League of Villains. He's an independent guy and because you know just like I just want to sneak into UA and they, they sort of reach this sort of like fun compromise and they become friends. And that to me seems like given how light this arc is, that would be like the best way to end it. Um, and it would also serve what I think will be the larger mission of uh, Midora surpassing all might in the fact that like he learns the skill of empathy and understanding and by getting through to gentle the gentle criminal he sort of comes to the realization that like dealing with these people these eccentric villains who want to use their quirks for evil purposes uh, is not by beating them down with fists of course there'll be plenty of that because that's what we come here for but understanding them and giving them some sort of legitimacy. So, you know, maybe he'll, like, incorporate Gentle into the stage show as, like, some grand finale. And then Gentle will get it filmed, and he'll get a little bit more famous, and he'll thank Medora. And it'll all sort of be, uh, you know, kind of pre-planned. And they'll they'll basically kind of become friends. And he he can become, like, a little side guy who, like, you know, informs um, Medora about the villain community. Uh, Because it just feels like he's too goofy and generally nice and ineffective to, like, be, like, a real, you know, I gotta punch the shit out of him threat. So, you know, a power of friendship, given the fact that, you know, all shonen manga is basically an extended treaty on, you know, the power of friendship that, you know, I could see a friendship no jutsu, talk no jutsu being the ultimate way how this resolves. And it, it, would, it, would, it would work. It would work. It would, wouldn't be a bad way to end this arc. Uh, in terms of, like, giving Medora something and uh, giving, um, you know, gentle, the gentle criminal, because he's definitely a step down, because Horikoshi is really good at drawing the villains. I think all of his villain designs are top-notch. The character work isn't as good, but, well, except for, like, I think the one he's been most effective with is uh, Twice. I really liked his backstory, and I really love the fact that, like, you know, he's got this sort of, like, gaggy, you know, Deadpool demeanor when he's got his mask on. And when he, you know, takes it off, he's, like, this more regular, traditional gruff guy. And I love his backstory. I think he's, like, a pure indication of, like, sort of, like, um, how villains work in this world and how they're these sort of, like, people who, you know, have these disabilities uh, who society doesn't accept. And, you know, the reason why villain communities are so important for them is the fact that um they don't feel like you know the regular quirk world accepts them all they do is get beaten down um so i thought his work with that guy was really good uh toga like i think she's a great character design i don't think she's a great character like like i i can understand why she's gonna be a fan favorite she's like ooh, psycho killer harley quinn crazy stabby yandere uh orgasm squish face girl you know, she, she's definitely going to be very popular, especially when she gets animated. Oh, my God. People are going to go apeshit for her. But, like, I, I don't think the character's done anything. And Dabby's another example. Like, I, I think his character design is fucking fantastic. It, it's, like, 10 out of 10, a brilliant character design. But I don't think he's a great character. Like, like I, I don't know. What that, oh, he's the lazy guy and he shoots fire. I don't, I don't know what this guy's gimmick is. Uh but, you know, the character design is freaking fantastic. Shir- Tomer Shigaraki is a great character design. Ch- uh, Chigaski has a great character design. Um, pretty much all the villains have, like, really good character designs, even if their, you know, character writing isn't quite up to snuff compared to, like, you know, other stuff he's done. Um, but, you know, Gentil, the gentle criminal, you know, is kind of like a dumb 
goofy guy and a goofy character design that takes itself seriously. Like, his signature moment is he's, like, trying to pour out tea dramatically and he, like, you know, pours it on, you know, La Brava's face. You know, that that's the ultimate indication that, like, we're not supposed to take this guy so seriously. He's just not that good of a guy. Uh, so, yeah, um, I say, like, personally, I, I don't know, I kind of want to give it, like, a 7.5, just because, like, the story didn't really advance that much. But, you know, it's still good, fun, solid storytelling, so, you know, uh, I'll be nice, I'll give it an 8. Uh, it, was a, it was a good chapter, it was a good, light-hearted chapter with increasing stakes, but not world-shattering stakes. And, and so far, I'm, I'm liking this as, like, a good intermediary you know, that's the thing about My Hero Academia. Um, most of the arcs are, like, much shorter than, you know, other shonen manga. Like, Horikoshi is very good at, like, getting in, getting out, uh, drawing really cool shit, and just moving on to the next one. Like, you know, most of the arcs are, like, no more than, like, 10 or 12 chapters, 20 chapters at most. Uh, he's, he's very good at, like, moving things along and keeping things at a brisk pace, so, you know, good on that, you know. God, uh, God help us if he did, like, a ridiculously long Dresser Rosa, you know, arc or Totland arc. Um, but, you know, it's good, good stuff, good stuff. My hero is, uh, gonna be good. I hope I can get Drab Goro into the next review for, uh, next week for My Hero Academia Season 3. But, uh, you know, he, his his dream has come true. He, he's got this girl he's dating that he, a uh, cute little Chinese girl. And, uh, you know, he wanted to date her for a long time. So that's half the reason why he's, uh, hasn't been around. Because, like, oh, it's so frustrating. Like, she started inviting him to do these, like, group meetup events for, like, oh, let's go to Hot Pot and do all these stupid cultural things. So he, he, he you know, went to it in hopes of, like, you know, either picking up her or picking up some other girl um and he actually you know ooh achieved dating status which sucks for me since he was like my main go-to guy to drag for these things who read it and it was it was fun talking about my hero with him uh so chances are it's going to be next to difficult diff- next to impossible or or extremely difficult i mean my situation has also made it difficult working at amazon on saturdays and sundays from Three to eight cuts out a huge amount of time when I would no- would have normally been free to like you know go do my preferred fun uh, review fun time with him, uh, so that makes things more difficult. And now, oh my god, stupid goddamn girlfriend's gonna be like taking away all my goddamn review fun time. And I-, I hate talking to myself in these reviews. I like having someone to bounce off of. So we'll see. You know, I am committed to doing my hero month, and I'm committed to doing it you know, efficiently. Um, you know, that's half the reason why I've been doing Hunter Hunter reviews, because I really wanted to do it with him, but I'm I'm not gonna be that um forgiving with uh, my hero. It's like we're either gonna do it or we're not gonna do it. Uh or no, I'm either gonna do it with him or I'm going to do it alone because uh, I'm getting this done. I'm, I'm militant. I, I, I want to grow my channel. And I think the inconsistent on at least this is going to do that. So uh, thank you for hearing me out. Uh, this chapter was a fun little fun. My hero chapter and uh, stay tuned for more solo reviews or reviews with other people. If I can drag them to it and remember lobsters and tennis, but don't you grab it. Do you like clothes but hate shopping? Then t Blocks is the subscription service for you. But I know what you're thinking. But Lobster, how is that any different than Loot Crate or the other subscription services? Well, t Blocks sends you t-shirts, which is clothing, which is actually useful, unlike the useless swag junk that Loot Crate keeps peddling on gullible schmucks. And this isn't just knockoff brand crap. t Blocks hooks you up with licensed shirts for all the stuff you love, because you need clothes. How else are you going to keep your puny human man flesh protected from the elements? T-shirts are useful for any occasion. Wear them. Give them to friends. Give them to enemies. Knit them together. Make a quilt. T-shirts are life. And you know the best part? It'll only cost you $6.99. That's right. You can get 12 shirts sent to you for once a month for only $6.99. And you know what? If ultra-cheap licensed goods are too basic for you, then there's also the Community t Block set, which features original designs from the best up-and-coming artists, so you can keep that hipster street cred. But I'm here to save you even more money! Use the code LOBSTERTBX at checkout and you'll save 10% on any order. Be a t-shirt wearing God amongst mortals. Use the power of the most expensive seafood to get you the cheapest t-shirts now!